Hi guys, welcome to our geography lesson. As you remember, at the beginning of our school year, when we started learning geography, we talked about maps and globes. So we mentioned the basic concepts of maps as the way of representing some areas. And now, today, we are going to get into more details about maps. So, there are different things that you need to know when we talk about maps. So, what is a map? A map is a general view of an area, usually some part of the Earth's surface, as seen from above, okay? At a greatly reduced size, of course. A map is also any geographical image of the environment. But, of course, maps can be used in many different purposes, not just for geography. It can be used in history or something else by using different uh, data, different information that can be applied uh, graphically. Okay? So, why we make maps? Why people use maps at all? First of all, to represent a larger area than we can see with our eyes. Okay? and to show a phenomenon or pro process we can't see with our eyes only. To present some information concisely or to show spatial relationship, okay? Relationships between two spaces, okay? Different towns, different countries and so on. So when you look at this photo you can see a map of a world, our world. So you can see all the continents, you can see oceans, poles and seas and the first uh, glance that you can uh, have here is that you can see different colors used. Remember when we talked about key, key information that can be put uh, down at the bottom of the map and you remember when you colored the key differently. For example, green as the color is usually used in map, on maps for marking la the land, the, ra the land with forests, woods and so on. The blue color is used for, of course, water, ocean, seas, rivers and this white color is used for North and South Pole, okay? And here, this yellowish part can be representative of deserts or, or of the places with a small amount of forest, okay? And this is how we represent a larger area with the help of map. Or we can show what we can't see. For example, this colorful map is actually some kind of deforesting that is presented on the map and different color, each color represents different time period as you can see here in different areas of some country and you can, you can check the relation between these places regarding this information, okay? Or when we want to present something concisely use maps. So here we have the map of Russia and it says here Russian population. It means we can use it to present how many people live in each region of Russia, for example. You can see different colors, different hues of colors and you can see the relation between the numbers, the amounts, okay? Here we can show spatial relationships. So this is the example of some map that mm, represents cholera and the map, meaning some place, country or streets and the uh, division between the data. Okay? So how do we read maps? The important thing when you use maps is of course that you can read them correctly. Okay? So maps are selective views of reality. We select some of the things that we want to present and then we read the, the information. Size of the map is relative to reality and this is called scale. OK? 
okay? We are going to explain this further on. Uh, so we have to read what is on the map, meaning we have to read symbolization, okay? And of course, there are different shapes of the map, meaning different projections of maps. So what is a map scale? Let's see. A map scale is actually the ratio of the distance on the map to the distance on the ground. When I say ratio, I mean relationship between the two things, the two, the, the two places, two amounts of something, etc. So here you have the distance uh, between two places, for example. Okay, scale is a fraction. It means that we have to, again, apply the knowledge of fractions in this geographical area. So a larger area covered means larger denominator, okay? What does it mean? Well, a larger denominator means smaller fraction and vice versa. So a large scale map actually covers a small area. What this means? Well, simply, if you have a large scale map, you actually are presenting a smaller area, but enlarged, like this. Here you have two examples. This is a large scale, scale map, and this is a small scale map. They, uh, they, they represent the same, uh, the same place, something about Chicago city. But here you can see enlarged areas, so you can see the details, and here you can see more general view of, the, of Chicago and the surrounding places, okay? Again, when we mention the ratio of the distance on the map to the distance on the ground, uh, that means a map scale, they have different uh, types. They can be of different types. So we can have graphic scales like this. Here it, is, uh, it says scale in miles or scale in kilometers. And what happens with this kind of scale? Well, it says the same if you photocopy it, okay? Or it might not be right for the whole map. So you cannot use each kind of scale for each and every purpose. It can be verbal. So we can say one inch equals to 10 miles, for example. It is easy to uh, understand. It can be changed if, if photocopied. And you can have, of course, representative fraction or ratio. Very often you will see something like this. Okay, this is a kind of a ratio between the real size of some thing, uh, the things that you want to represent on the map and the relation, uh, the ratio uh, on the map. So you can have like this, 1 to 24,000 or 1 to 10,000 and so on. Um, you don't have to know all of these information at once. This is just for you to better understand if you sometimes see something like this to know what is it about, okay? So uh, what about map symbolization? So maps use symbols. Symbols are a code instead of a text. So we are go not going to write the text, the words, we are going to most often use symbols on maps. So there are three kinds of symbols on map. These are point, line and area. They consider or cover or represent shape, size, orientation, pattern, color and value. Okay? Like this. So these are some of the visual variables, for example, for shape, size, orientation, pattern or texture, hue, meaning color, or hue value, the different shades of the same color. For example, the first two you can see representing the cities. Remember once when I told you about the capital cities that they always represent, for example, with a square on the map, and the other smaller uh, towns or city or places are represented by circles. Then you have smaller to bigger 
circles, circles okay? Orientation meaning left, right, straight, forward, etc. You can have different colors for different uses. Okay? So, uh, what about point symbols? Let's see. Every symbol counts as one occurrence. So, there are qualitative points. They indicate location and they can also describe that location. And we have quantitative points. It means they show a distribution and they can indicate a value of something. For example, graduated symbols. Like this. Here you have indicate location symbols and the ones that describe location. What does it mean? Well, see, here you have these symbols applied on different parts of the map, but here you have been uh, explained these symbols. What do they mean? Most often you have to have some kind of explanation for the symbols in order for you to understand what are you reading on the map. Okay? Many of these symbols are actually something that is used very often, so you probably know this. Or they can show a distribution. So you can see two maps of the same uh, country or same continent, whatever, and you have this one and this one differently used colors to show a different distribution of something. Okay? Or they can indicate a value. Here you have different colors for different purposes, different amounts of something. You can have bars or charts that are used either on the map directly or next to it. You have different um, symbols for different parts of the information. So the, the thing is you're going to learn about ch reading charts, reading bars, so graphic uh, representations, so you're going to um, understand it more clearly later on. Okay? What about line symbols? So let's see. They are one-dimensional. They are mostly used for borders or roads. There are, there are isolines that connect same values. Flow line maps, for example, indicate value by width of line. For example, like this, or like this. There are, these are isolines, meaning contour lines, okay? Or flow line maps. As you can see, the difference in width represent different things on the map, okay? So, check this out. Okay, what about area symbols? Let's see. Each territory or region has one value on the map. So, there are differences in kind and in value. There are choropleth maps, usually darker indicates more of something on these kinds of maps, okay? Cartograms, as well, distort area to show some value. Like this. These are maps used for the election parts in the USA, for example. They can show different votes or differences in kind of something. These, these are, this is the map of different religion, religions in different countries, different continents. Okay. Differences in value, for example, this is the type of choropleth. So you can see the difference in color that shows difference in value. Or cartogram, again, you can see the difference in color and there is explained key terms. And in the end, you have topographic uh, maps. They're also called quadrangles. Okay? They map out the entire country in a standard fashion, like this in, in, uh, in behind. Show, they sh can show 2D features, point, line, area. They also show 3D via contour lines. They use common symbols that are in the appendix of the text. And note the contour interval at the bottom of the map, usually given somewhere here, okay? So, 
This was in short, but with some of the details about maps that you are still going to learn it later on more. So I don't expect from you to know everything at once. Just try to understand why do we have all these symbols on maps and that th there are different types of maps so that you can manage to do, uh, use it on your own someday. I hope that you enjoy this and I hope that you found this, this useful. See you soon. Bye.